When it comes to size and spectacle, the peak of the space age passed in 1973 with the final flight of the Saturn V rocket that had carried the Apollo astronauts to the moon. Its first flight in 1967 provoked Walter Cronkite, an American news anchor, reporting far from the pad to exclaim, My God, our building's shaking here, as ceiling tiles fell around them. Half a century later, nothing as powerful has reached orbit since. But in a Texas hamlet a couple of miles from the Kennedy Space Center, SpaceX, a rocketry firm founded by Elon Musk, is developing a machine that it hopes will change that. At this moment, this rocket being launched into orbit is increasingly highlighting its importance more than we think, even surpassing NASA. Why Starship first reaching orbit is even more important than NASA thinks. Stay tuned as we dive into this in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Built from gleaming stainless steel with its nose adorned with fins and 10 meters taller than even the Saturn V, Starship looks like something from the cover of a 1950s pulp science fiction magazine. Its planned payload of up to over 180 tons means that five Starship flights could put more stuff into space than the rest of the world managed with 135 rocket launches in 2021. Its upper stage contains more pressurized volume than the International Space Station, which took a decade, dozens of launches, and perhaps $100 billion to assemble. But it's not just the size that matters. When a Saturn V took off to send men to the moon, the only bit of the 2,800 tons of hardware that came back was a cramped five-ton capsule with three men inside. Each new mission meant a new Saturn V. With Starship, the idea is that all the hardware will come back. The massive booster stage almost immediately, the second orbital stage after fulfilling whatever mission it had been sent on. At a press event in February 2022 to show off an assembled rocket, Elon Musk reiterated his reasons for founding SpaceX. To buy humanity an insurance policy against existential risks by establishing a colony on Mars. Starship is designed to transport a million tons of supplies he thinks are needed for that job, roughly a hundred times more mass than has been launched since the start of the space age. To that end, it's designed to be not only the biggest rocket ever built, but also the cheapest. With all these advantages, Starship is indeed a milestone in human history. When Starship reaches orbit, it essentially raises the question of the path forward for the United States. It's not an exaggeration to say that Starship should be placed at the center of the country's human space exploration program, even before it reaches orbit. SpaceX has an iterative, rapid-fire, startup-style culture very different from that of older aerospace firms. Mr. Musk's development philosophy is that if things aren't failing, you're not innovating enough. The firm mixes high-tech, bespoke design in some areas, such as the Raptor engines. With a make-do-and-mend attitude elsewhere, some super-heavy prototypes have fins controlled by electric motors taken from cars made by Tesla. One good example is the rocket's stainless steel construction. Starship was originally going to be built from the high-tech carbon fiber composites, which are both very strong and very light. But in 2019, despite having produced several big components, SpaceX went back to the drawing board. Carbon composites, it turns out, have several disadvantages. They're porous, fiddly to work with, and need to be cured in an autoclave. Not easy when making rocket body segments that are 9 meters across. And at around 130 bucks a kilogram, composites are expensive. Stainless steel, by contrast, is strong. However, other rocket companies are hesitant to manufacture their rockets with stainless steel because it's heavy. And the heavier your actual rocket, the less payload you can carry to space on the same fuel tank. Instead, the outer frames of most rockets are made from sturdy yet lightweight metals like aluminum and titanium. However, SpaceX has researched and discovered that some steel alloys get significantly stronger as they cool down, meaning less is required for a given strength. And since Starship uses cryogenic propellant, cooling is an abundant supply. Steel is tougher too, which can save weight elsewhere. Stainless steel doesn't need painting, which reduces weight. It's much easier to work with and costs mere dollars per kilogram. For a company that intends to mass produce its rocket, says Simon Potter at Bryce Tech, a firm of space industry analysts, that matters. 
Truth be told, few rocket companies can pull off feats like Elon Musk's SpaceX. A cheap, big, reusable rocket has been a dream of space cadets for decades. But Starship fulfills it, at least on paper. You almost get to a point where launch costs would go away entirely as a consideration, says Mr. Potter. However, you can achieve even more with those capabilities. Jonathan McDowell, an astrophysicist and rocket enthusiast at the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics, notes that Starship's colossal size might go unused in the commercial satellite market, at least for the foreseeable future. There just isn't currently a market for large numbers of enormous payloads, he says. SpaceX's Falcon Heavy, with a payload capacity of 64 tons, is the most powerful rocket currently flying. However, with robust development and a prioritized focus on space today, the satellite industry might adapt in time. In any case, Musk has indicated that Starship, thanks to its cheapness, will replace SpaceX's smaller Falcon rockets, which already have a market share of around 50%. If he sticks to that plan, then early commercial launches of Starship could fly with their holds mostly empty. Take, for example, SpaceX's plans to deploy 400 Starlink satellites into orbit with each launch on Starship, where a significant portion of the cost is just the launch fuel. Who could compete with that? All the existing expendable rockets worldwide simply won't be able to compete with Starship, and those companies or countries that seek to develop fully reusable rockets are years behind SpaceX and will find SpaceX will have moved well forward by the time their competitors achieve full reusability. It's hard to catch a target that's both ahead of you and accelerating away. In addition, Starship also holds significant historical significance. Noteworthy, like the first woman and the first person of color on the moon, the true historical milestone is the establishment of humanity's first foothold beyond Earth. NASA has chosen a modified version of Starship's upper stage to ferry astronauts to the lunar surface as part of its ambitious Artemis program. Most of Artemis is designed to use the SLS, another jumbo-sized rocket that NASA is developing as a successor to the space shuttle. But the SLS has a lower cargo capacity than Starship does, and a launch cost projected at $2 billion at a time. If Starship works, NASA could come under pressure to scrap the SLS entirely. Starship will mark a turning point for humanity as we begin to expand beyond Earth. It's on the scale of any great moment of exploration and settlement. A fully functional Starship would so thoroughly render all legacy launch systems obsolete that it may as well be that they never even existed. Casey Hanmer, physicist and founder of the carbon capture startup Terraform Industries, who blogs regularly about advances in space travel, and we can just imagine it is a space elevator connecting humanity on Earth to exploratory journeys across planets. As our society shows an increasing interest in space, the demand for accessing new planets is rising. In recent years, the watery moons of Saturn and Jupiter have overtaken Mars as the most promising places to search for alien life. One group of scientists has drawn up a plan to use Starship to explore Neptune, which has been visited just once before in 1989, when the American Voyager 2 probe zoomed by on its way out of the solar system. Such a spacecraft could weigh tens of tons compared with just 722 kilograms for Voyager 2. As for commercial customers, two billionaires are waiting for Starship besides Musk. One is Jared Isaacman, who funded and flew on a SpaceX Crew Dragon mission called Inspiration4 back in September and started the Polaris program a cadre of commercial astronauts and charity fundraisers who were expected to crew the first Starship flights with humans on board. As for lunar ambitions, Japanese entrepreneur Yusaku Mazwa and Dennis Tito, an American entrepreneur who self-funded a trip to the ISS on a Russian spacecraft back in 2001, they've both paid SpaceX unspecified amounts for around-the-moon trips. But first, SpaceX has to make the rocket work. In his press conference, Mr. Musk was at pains to play down the probability of the orbital test. When it happens, going smoothly. Even if it did, plenty more testing would be needed before the rocket would be ready to fly real cargo. However, despite the technical challenges ahead, it would take a bold person to bet against SpaceX. In 2008, after the first three launches of its tiny Falcon 1 rocket had failed, the firm almost went under. But the fourth launch worked. The Falcon 9's impressive failure-free run was preceded by more than a dozen unsuccessful attempts to land its first stage. Mr. Musk, for his part, is confident. Starship will work, he said. There will be a few bumps along the road, but it'll work. That's all for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. 
please let us know what you think in the comments section below. Your feedback's very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thanks for watching and see you next time.